Welcome back to the studio. If you're new, I'm Slu. If you've been following the channel for a while or at all, you know that I've just moved to the studio in the past two months and it's been a whirlwind of work to get it operational, to get everything set up, all the plans I had. And before we even start going in deep to every corner and dissecting the studio, I have like five or six vlogs of moving out of my old studio into this studio, building every little section, the painted area, very detailed. So if you want some more kind of detailed videos, go check those out. They'll be linked in the cards or in the description. Awesome videos, walking through every step. But today we're kind of just gonna talk about the genesis of this place, the agenda, um, my goals, and also just check out the fully, the fully formed studio, which is always subject to change. So I'm a painter, you know, I'm a videographer, I'm a YouTuber, um, I, I do creative projects, and my old studio in Bridgeport, you know, was to supplement those interests. And it was wonderful, it was great, but what my old studio was missing was in-person, you know, connecting and collaboration. So the, the goal and agenda for raising money to move into not only a bigger space, but in the metropolis of Brooklyn and New York, which is so expensive, was to fill this void of connecting with people and collaborating in person. So that is like the major goal of this location and the studio and even my new business ventures that I'm going in is to really include people. So that's kind of like the main idea and why you see so much open space in this place. You know, there's a lot of stuff and this is 2000 square feet, which is like a really large space for wonderful activities that we'll go into. But, you know, having this open space is going to facilitate really wonderful activities and collaborations and gives you the modularity and opportunity to do cool projects. So, Chris, let's start the tour because, you know, again, people have probably seen, but this is like fully operational. We're finished. It's complete. Um, this is sort of, you know, the painting area you can see behind me. We got storage. We got tools, all the necessities for building stuff, mural supplies, you know, this is like the tool rack, like you can see. Um, surface area, you know, in the video of building these French cleats and all of this desks, my whole agenda was this kind of theory that Adam Savage talks about as a, you know, uh, the king of the nerds, the king of maker, um, which is um, first order retrievability, which basically means the, the most used things, the most used tools are the most easily accessible. And so there's basically no drawers in this whole studio. Everything is surface area, surface area. You could grab everything with a step. It's all out. These are like portfolio cases. So those are drawers. But, you know, this is the main painting area. We got French cleats, which makes, you know, hanging canvases or anything really easy. Uh, safe space without um, easels and everything. Another major amazing aspect, which, which took me like eight weeks to kind of set up and execute were these light panels, which is really wonderful, soft light for the painting area so that your painting surface is extremely well lit, kind of mimicking north light, like the sun. You can tell it's kind of warmish light, really beautiful and delicious. And just the materials, everything is here, you know, so this is the painting area where, you know, honestly, I'll be spending the majority of time. People don't know that, you know, my job, obviously a painter, you need to paint, work needs to get done. So I'm here and then I'm also behind the computer, which we'll get to. Um, and a lot of this furniture is from my old studio. Like this portfolio case I got um, for free. Someone just was gonna throw it out. So I had it, I've had that for four years. JT and I got this table four years ago. So I actually saved a lot of money with the furniture because um, I pretty much built my own furniture or I just brought it from the old studio. Functionality over everything. Um, chrome trash can as well. Over here, is probably the place where it's gonna change a lot. Right now I have all this merchant from the hoodies, um, which is a lot. So this is like storage. Eventually this hopefully will be storage for not merch. All this merch will be gone. But this is just like the corner. This is another entrance actually, this doorway. But right now it's uh, just for storage. We got camera equipment, we got other canvases, we got just you know miscellaneous junk. And then this is like uh, a storage kind of cabinet I built which includes big canvas storage, cardboard, which I use to ship paintings and stuff. On top, we got miscellaneous junk um, and storage because you know that's like a huge actually issue with like owning and managing a studio is kind of just storing things. So that's really beautiful and delicious. We got the photo studio. This was this exact setup was in my old studio, which is 
really great, really easy, and you know, actually pretty cheap, the, the brackets to hang all those things. Um, and you know, people come here to take photos. We got a really nice soft box light, other stuff for people to come in and do content stuff or clothing, you know, other homies who need you know, these resources, these utilities, which is again, the point of this studio a resource for myself and my business to paint and make content and do creative projects, but also to be a switchblade resource for friends and other creatives. Come over here, Chris, because this is also like awesome storage. And I built this um, kind of cabinet, which is open on the back also, to kind of be near this cubby for more storage. So there's a lot of wood storage, easels, huge canvases, bigger tools, Actually really perfect, it's a mess now, but that's gonna be filled even more because you know storage is just important. That's actually really great. Um, moving this way, you could see that like also every wall space is kind of trying to be filled with my artwork, which is really great. So this isn't like a gallery, but it's just nice to have artwork up and it looks juicy. This is like the chill area. You know, you gotta have a, some couches in here, right? For homies to hang out relax. It's so hot in here that even sitting on this couch makes me schvetz. This is really great that the studio came with like this kitchenette running water, which I didn't have at my old studio for like four years, which is crazy. I bought this fridge. So this is just like really nice to have um, to wash your hands, obviously wash paintbrushes um, instead of just going to the bathroom. Another just desk area space to hang out, eat, collaborate and talk, you know, generic stuff library. Bring it in here, Chris, because I'm a huge nerd if people don't know. So I love um, basically two things. I love fantasy. So like Brandon Sanderson, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, other stories. Also Greek mythology and, um, you know, art books down here and just like classic books. So I'm trying to build this library and this is where I will sit and read if I have time to get smarter. Um, and yeah, this is just storage, still a mess. I really just finished this place, so it's, you know, it's all subject to change. Everything else can be subject to change. So it's, 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 that's like the point of it. You wanna be flexible with um, this sort of situation if new projects come about or if you have, you know, different agendas. But this main space, like this is pretty much, we just covered the perimeter and the point of this open space all right here, which is probably almost a thousand square feet of just nothing is for eventually to have like figure drawing sessions. And you know, this is looking probably like three or four months down the road. I'm trying to, you know, be a private institution, so to speak. I could get in depth with this later and I'll keep talking about it. But my goal is really to hire models, have figure drawing sessions bi-weekly, you know, have many artist residencies for younger kids or up and coming artists, things like that. And so this would be like where the model stand would be. And then you could have 10 people around with easels, drawing and painting, things like that. Or if you wanna do big compositional photography, which is my goal to take pictures of people dressed in crazy things and do different scenes to then paint. You know, you wanna have this freedom of open space. So this is actually a big deal, even though it's nothing, but that's, um, that's the point. And so that's pretty much that. And then this is like the awesome, most juicy room, which Chris and I have been working on, which is the podcast studio. Um, you know, we have a full rig here for 4K editing, podcasting. Like obviously again, people don't really realize, but you know, 60% of the job is to edit videos and produce content somehow. Um, so you need to really great tool and machine. And then we got the whole pot, like this is the podcast studio, obviously, the set, we got the mics and everything. Like this is the shot you'll see for the podcast, which is also coming soon in August. We've been recording, it's been great. Um, and like this, this whole room and this, um, you know, venture of the podcast was like the biggest um, new venture that I was trying to get into and I'm really excited. It's been a dream to kind of start a podcast talking to other creative professionals, cross-pollinating, just having wonderful conversations with other artists of any genre. And Brooklyn's a great place because there's a limitless, there's an unlimited amount of awesome people to talk to. And yeah, so Chris and I have been working on really, you know, making the show from the ground up. 
And that leads me to actually Chris, who's behind the camera. You know, I've never had someone work for me, but you know, my plan of scaling up, obviously the space, the new ventures, you know, the business, I need someone to help me and to be on my team. And Chris is wonderful. He is blushing right now. Just kidding. But he's, you know, he's a professional. He manages other podcasts. He's a videographer. He's an editor. So it's exactly what I needed. And it's really amazing that, you know, I got another person on the team and I am still looking for other people. I know I sent out that email looking for other editors and videographers and I'm trying to get back to some people. But for now, Chris is my main man and we've been doing great. And it's all, you know, these are all the beginning stages. This has only been two months. I mean, it's only been like a week since everything is done, since I've stopped building. But um, now it's time to like really use it, right? To actually use all the things, to use Chris's, you know, capabilities and mine and actually just, you know, head down and work. And so that's the plan. Let's get out of this room. It's about 90 degrees. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting. I, I, there's so much I want to talk about and I, I do talk about in the vlogs. So you should go check out those vlogs. But again, there's like so many different fingers um, that this place and the agenda of this place is, is going to touch. And I've only, you know, it's really just the beginning. And I'm really excited. I'm very lucky. Again, if you want to hear about how I got this place, how I raised money, um, even moving out of the old studio, this is basically just its bigger br brother. It's like very similar in a lot of ways. It's just in a metropolis in one of the biggest cities in the world. Um, and it is bigger, but I I'm pretty much doing the same thing I've been doing for three years, certainly doing some new things. You know, I'm certainly trying to do other crazy things, but it's all an iterative process, very slow, but you know, it, it's really exciting. And I'm ranting, I could hardly breathe. And so that's it, I don't know what else to say, but if you have questions, leave them in the comments. Get excited for the podcast. I'm starting to do really big painting projects, really excited. Um, and so that's it, anything else, Chris, that you can think of? Camera's not overheating. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.